Now I've sort of been put into this perspective of being the go-to guy on YouTube for water cooling. And although that was never actually intentional, I'll go ahead and embrace that. And we will start at the beginning here with the very important question of, should you even water cool your computer? A lot of folks, especially on forums, think it's very cut and dry. The answer is yes or the answer is no, but I don't think it's quite that simple. So today we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna let you know, hopefully by the end of this video, if you think water cooling is going to be for you. Guys, it's 2016, it's a brand new year, so why not learn something new? Don't just learn what I'm teaching you, head on over to lynda.com slash J, that's J-A-Y, and choose from thousands of online tutorials where you guys can learn at your own pace about pretty much any subject you want from leading industry experts. Where else can you possibly go on the internet where you can learn from the best of the best about subject matter that pertains and interests you? That's the big thing about lynda.com is that you can check it out and learn at your own pace and that's what's gonna help you learn things. So head over there right now and get your free trial at lynda.com slash J and check out anything that you want from their thousands of online videos and tutorials. lynda.com slash J, J-A-Y, link is in the description. Head over there right now or at the end of this video or open a new tab, whatever. Watch them at the same time. I mean, that's like multitasking. Now that business has been taken care of, let's get down to the subject matter for today. And that being probably one that I am asked so much. I see it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube messages, it doesn't matter. Emails, especially emails. There's been an influx of emails lately of people asking me pretty much the basic question of Jay, should I water cool my PC? Now, I think that's kind of a loaded question. I don't think the answer is really all that easy. I think the question should be more reworded in, Jay, do I need to water cool? Should is always a subjective question, and that's going to be, the answer is going to vary, obviously, on the perspective of both the person asking and the person answering. Now, do I think you should water cool your PC? Uh, I can't answer that. I can't say yes, I can't say no. The answer of do I need to water cool my PC is going to be on the perspective of what do you want your PC to do? Are you gonna leave your clocks at stock? Are you going to overclock? Are you gonna be including your graphics cards in your loop? How many graphics cards? One, two, three, four? Are you gonna be doing seven like Linus did with his gaming server that he built? You know, it's really comes down to that question. What are you doing with your PC? Now. Even then, it's not as cut and dry as are you gonna be overclocking? Even overclocking isn't gonna be the definitive answer when it comes to whether or not you should water cool because there's a lot of benefits to water cooling other than just overclocking. There's the longevity of keeping your comp components nice and cool. Heat is the number one killer of electronic components. There's also the factor of noise. Do you want to keep it as quiet as possible? If you're gonna leave your stock clocks and your stock voltages, then you can get away with water cooling at very low RPM speeds and have a very silent system. Water cooling isn't just about getting better temperatures on increased voltages and uh, clock speeds, it's also about noise. If you're going to be leaving things at moderate to low voltage, and you're not gonna be pushing things too, too far, you can get away with running your fans on your radiators at a very low speed. And it's gonna be able to maintain a very low speed as things ramp up with the usage of the CPU. So things like rendering and gaming don't need the fans to ramp up to move as much hot air as it can out of the system, which is what air cooling is going to do because air cooling's capacity is increased by adding more air through that heat sink. So to add more air, more RPMs or higher CFM fans, which mean more noise. Same thing with the GPU. The fans will ramp up to move more air more quickly to increase the efficiency and the cooling effectiveness of a heat sink. Now radiators aren't really any different where the fan speed does affect the efficiency of the radiator, but that curve is a lot less steep. Air cooled heat sinks are a lot more steep where you have to push an exponential amount of air through them to increase their effectiveness when it comes to cooling. Now radiators and water cooling is much more efficient, which means you can get away with a lot less speed when it comes to the effectiveness of the radiator. Now Skunk Works, for example, I've got this thing overclocked 24 seven. The GPUs and the CPU are running overclocked at all times. I don't even have them ramping down when they're not doing anything. Right now, while showing the desktop, this thing is still running a max 4.6 gigahertz right now with 1.35 volts being pushed to it or 1.325 volts being pushed to it at all times. Now, you guys obviously can't hear it. One, because I've got a lab mic on, but two, it's very, very quiet because the fans never ramp up. I don't have the fans set to ramp up. I have them set at a pretty 
minimum speed at all times. But that's because I've got so many fans and so much radiator space, I can get away with overclocking them, all of them, the GPUs and the CPU all the time without actually having to speed up the fans. Because if I had to speed up these fans, it would be very noisy. I've got one, two, three, four fans in the bottom rad that you can see right there. I've got one, two, three intake fans that you guys can see out there in the front. I've got another two radiator fans on the back of the, of the, the case right there that's on the GPU loop. I've got one, two, three, four fans on the top uh, for the exhaust, or the technically their exhaust fans on the CPU loop, and then one radiator fan in the back. Uh, or not radiator fan, but case fan in the back, bringing a little bit of air out the back of the case. That's 14 fans. 14 fans in this system. So if they had to ramp up, man, there would be no noise or decibel benefit at all to doing water cooling. So by doing big radiators, I could slow them down. They don't have to ramp up. So there is a not only a overclocking benefit, but an acoustic benefit to that as well. Now, another way to twist that question a little bit, like a pretzel, because as you can see here, there's a theme of twisting pretzels, apparently, is do I need to water cool my graphics card to overclock it? And, you know, a few years back, right around the 580, the GTX 580 and older, I would have said absolutely, because there weren't a lot of custom cooler applications being applied back then. I mean, you had things like Twin Frozer and stuff that existed, but the, the beefier coolers that you're seeing on graphics cards today, like the one I have here on the EVGA Kingpin, the 980 Ti Kingpin, uh, I mean, with its solid copper heat sinks and solid copper base plate and solid copper heat pipes, these were not really existing back then. Heat pipes were just starting to make their way into graphics cards and the cooling benefit of heat pipes and copper and uh, vapor chambers weren't being utilized then like they are today. Now back then I would have said yes to overclock your graphics card and get the max benefits of overclocking and the max overclocks would require water cooling, but that's not the case today. I have pretty much found and I think I'll, you find anyone doing graphics card overclocking would agree that the max overclocks today are not being held back by thermals. Thermals are something that the graphics card manufacturers have definitely got under control. And on stock BIOSes and stock voltages, you are not going to get your max overclocks uh, any better on water than you are currently on air. But if you were going to start doing custom BIOS and really pushing the voltages on cards like this, I mean, this, this card is begging for a custom BIOS and pushing the voltages as high as you can, then you would start to see the limitations of air. We're adding something like the uh, water block for them. This is actually the one that's pre-filled for this card. Now we'll be doing this review here to see how much farther we can push the Kingpin. Because remember, I didn't get the best of overclocks out of this card. Then water cooling has a benefit. So again, that's a kind of a loaded question of, no, you don't need to water cool your graphics cards to get your max overclock if, remember there's always an if, like an if then statement, just like coding on computer. If you want to push the voltages higher than what is going to be warranted and recommended by your graphics card manufacturer, then overclocking gives you insurance and extra headroom that would otherwise be held back by air cooling. CPUs are often the same way, where you are going to get benefit of extra cooling capacity of larger radiators than you would typically find in all-in-one units, where you can push those overclocks farther and safer for 24-7 operation, like I'm doing with Skunkworks behind me. Now this is where I'm gonna drop a dose of truth on you guys, and here it is. So you guys ready? I do not recommend water cooling if buying the water cooling components takes away from the level of hardware you're able to buy. The, the Skunk Works loops you see behind me here are over $1,200. That's more than most people's entire computer budget. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's pretty simple. It means if you have to get an i5 instead of an i7, and let's say a 960 or a 970 instead of a 980 or 980 Ti to afford the water cooling stuff, then the amount of benefit you're getting out of that water cooling is extremely diminished by the level of components that you were stuck having to get in order to afford all of it. So I would always recommend air cooling on say a 980 Ti and an i7 versus going with a water cooled 970 and a water cooled i5 because the overclocking is barely going to match where the components you scrimped on would have been able to achieve on air cooling. I hope that makes sense. Never, ever, ever sacrifice the level of hardware that you're going to buy if it means getting lower level hardware to afford the water cooling. Always get the highest level of hardware that you can possibly afford at the time of building and 
then water cool that later. But you're never gonna find water blocks for things like 950s and 960s or 370s or, or whatever, when it, you know, R9 370 graphics cards, you're never gonna find water blocks for those cards because it, even the industry knows it makes no sense to take a $150 graphics card and then make a $150 or $125 full cover water block for that. It makes no sense to spend as much as the card is worth to water cool it. That's the reality there. So when I see emails from folks saying, I can't find a water block for my 950, that's because they don't exist. You would have to go with a universal block, which is not going to cover the VRMs or the chips or any of that stuff. Not to mention, that stuff is not getting hot enough. GTX 950s get what? 58 degrees Celsius is what all of my testing showed on all the 950s I had in here. I mean, it's not even hitting 60C. There's no benefit to water cooling it, period. Water cooling is also a niche thing where it looks cool, right? I mean, that looks badass back there. That's one of the reasons why I do it. Not just because of the added benefit of, of the lower temperatures and lower acoustics, but it just looks cool. And that's what you ultimately have to ask yourself, is if you're willing to spend the money on the premium that it costs to do a niche thing like water cooling, and you uh, really don't care about you know, sacrificing extra money, and you have the, uh, the, the high-end hardware that really should be water cooled, and you want it to look cool, then there's your answer. But hopefully today's video has helped you guys understand a little bit more when it comes to water cooling and the benefits of it. But if you're going to be taking a graphics card like the 980 Ti Kingpin or 980 Ti Classified or the MSI Gaming or the G1 Gaming or whatever from uh, Gigabyte, you're gonna find that you're gonna put your water blocks on and the temperatures came down but your overclocks didn't improve. There's other things involved, like custom BIOS flashing and stuff like that that's required. But anyway, hopefully today's video has helped you guys twist the perspective. I wanted to take that question of, Jay, should I water cool and throw it out the window? Should is never the proper way of looking at it. Needing it and wanting it, quite honestly, are the two perspectives that make the most sense. Because asking me if you should, I can't answer that for you. You need to answer whether or not you should by answering the question of whether or not you need to, can afford it, and want the additional maintenance that it's gonna take and the level of dedication water cooling takes. It adds maintenance to your PC and you've gotta be willing to deal with that. Anyway guys, maybe I'll do another video in the future here about all the things involved with maintaining your water cooling loop because that's, whether or not you should do it is one thing, whether or not you can do it and are dedicated to it is another. It's like a pet, you've got to care for it. You can't just set it up and let it go when it comes to custom water cooling loops. All in one coolers, yes, you can. That's what they're meant for. But this guy back here, you guys are seeing the struggles of keeping this thing the way I want it. Anyway guys, time to go. Hope today's video has helped you. I know it's a little bit longer, but I like these discussions and they tend to be a little bit more interesting. Plus you can listen to it while doing other things. You don't need to see my ugly mug just sitting here on the screen. I mean, I could have done this to some gameplay stuff. Maybe I, maybe I should have, I don't know. You guys are stuck looking at this. All right, see you in the next one.